Hi everyone and welcome to the Supercharged CX series. Today we're talking about personalizing CX with a very special guest. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Abby Dockerell. I'm the Product Enablement Manager here at Ultimate. I focus on knowledge sharing and that's something that we're looking to do here today. I am joined by a very special guest here today. I have Adrian who is an expert in CX um, and I would love to introduce him to you, but actually I think he could probably do a better job of that and I wouldn't want to take that away from him. So Adrian, would you be willing to introduce yourself and maybe tell us a little bit about your approach to CX? First of all, let me thank you and everybody over there ultimate to kind of say, look, hey, Kind of like thanks for asking me to be part of this this uh this series it's it's always um an honor and a privilege to speak to people that are as keen and enthusiastic as i am about this the, you know this whole space i guess my approach is that i am interested in pretty much only the one thing and that is how do we build nurture develop organizations that produce better outcomes for both their customers and their people. And when I say the people, I mean kind of people broadly, that includes their employees, their suppliers, their contractors, their investors, their stakeholders, the community at large and things. And so it's like, how can we build better organizations really? And so I try and advocate and agitate for those outcomes um and try and contribute to that conversation you know around that through my books my podcasts my articles all these different sort of things my but my approach in doing that is that i try and take a very problem focused and very human centric approach to something because here's what i'm really uh, what i'm interested in within that little subdomain is that i'm interested in the customer's experience rather than customer experience so, so i think too often we kind of like we jump to a fix um see a problem and we try and fix it rather than understanding or taking the time to understand the problem and if we if we take our time to better understand the problem i think we can pretty easily plot our way to kind of like um, a better solution and better outcomes. When I think you and I are both on the same page, we think this is a good idea. We think customer experience should be human centric. We should be looking at the customers, but why should brands care about it? What, what's your take on that? Well, because I think all of the research can like shows that um, a better service, better experience, you know, it, it pays dividends. So we will travel more, exert more effort, and do all these different things to get to get that better service, that better experience. What we often forget, however, is the same. What is true in the physical domain is also true in the digital domain. I would love to save people some pain. So do you have any sort of watch outs that you maybe suggest to people if they're getting started in the customer experience realm that you'll go... If you're looking to go that, down that route, let me save you some pain. Don't. Well, uh, no, is the short answer to that question. Um, and the reason why, um, well, no and yes. So no, I don't think there's, there, there's, a, there's a quick answer because actually I think we're dealing with specific problems for specific brands in specific markets and specific sets of customers. And therefore, it's all going to change. The only thing I would say is is to come back to what I said at the beginning: is we need to um, make sure that we understand the problem and spend time understanding the, the problem, and not be guided or um, seduced into the idea that if we copy some what somebody else is doing, we'll copy what everybody else is doing, that we're going to get different results. That's not a strategy. That's not a way to, to differentiate yourself. Well, let's do the same as everybody else and then expect that we're going to stand out from people. You're like, nah, no. You're like, to stand out, you have to do something different. You have to be different. Um, and that comes from understanding the problem kind of like right from the get-go. 
Hmm. Um, and I think you've kind of covered some sort of best practices, but do you have uh, the something that you would say is a gold standard example of how you would expect personalization and customer experience to look like? So personalization, I think there's a number of things that, that, that's going on with that. Now, I think we can all agree. You ask any brand or any customer, would they like a more personalized experience? And I think the answer is going to be invariably yes. The problem is, is that personalization uh, for the longest time has been dominated by marketing and campaigns and everything else. And sort of kind of, you know, personalizing the name on an email shot. How do I sell you more stuff? Right. And that's the, that, that speaks to a fundamental, the fundamental problem that I think that's at the heart of personalization. And that is because customers want it, brands want to deliver it. So we are all agreed on that. There was a piece of research that was done by NTT, this part of their global benchmarking study that back in the end of last year. And they, they produce all the same data. Yes, this is important. Yes, we should all do it. But what they also have identified is that there's a right at the heart of personalization. There is this um, fundamental misunderstanding about what personalization means for customers. Because also customers were saying, we just want to be one, listened to, understood, and to be helped in the way that we want to be helped. Um, not in the way that you think that personalization, sh what it should mean for us. Um, and so the only way that, that brands are going to be able to understand this and then deliver to this is if they actually really step into it and start doing different things. And I think support can play a big role in that because when you've already got a conversation going with a customer they it's also an opportunity not just to solve a problem but also to say hey while i've got you can i we're trying to do this can i ask you a couple of questions yeah i really like this and i think it almost brings us full circle to what we were talking about at the beginning when you actually put the customer in front and you don't sort of make assumptions on them you don't try and solve a problem for them without even including them in the decision but technology can really help in this realm, but mm -hmm. it does need to be handled delicately. So I would like to ask you, for specifically support teams, um, which tech innovations uh, like automation would you maybe suggest or um, have some recommendations on to help customers provide a, a better experience or uh, companies provide a better experience to their customers? You know, Sometimes a personalized experience can just be that you just help me really quickly. That you understand based on kind of like where the email is coming from. You read it, what they understand what the kind of problem's about. You kind of automate kind of like here's a kind of like the um we think what we think is an appropriate kind of response. And if that means you can do it out of hours, maybe over the weekend, whatever it might be, and it allows the customer to get the help that they need in a time that makes sense for them rather than having to wait for office hours, that fit, that's personalized. Um, what is your one tip in order to give the best personalized customer experience? What, what would be your one, one tip? Um, go beyond your data to really understand your customers. There's a great quote from a guy called Alfred Korzybski, is a Polish American linguistic scholar. And he said, the map is not the territory. And too often, we our data becomes the map, right? And it tells us what to do. But it doesn't tell you, like you think of a driving analogy and a driving analogy. You might have a map that tells you how to get from A to B, but it doesn't tell you the weather, the conditions of the roads, how much traffic that you've got, et cetera, et cetera. And that's where you can have, that's how, much, how far you have to go to really understand the territory because that's where kind of like where you have to get to, to be able to really develop and deliver that sort of personalized experience. We've all been there. And if we had better data and we were able to use this and personalize based on multiple factors, not just necessarily one facet, 
I think everything could be better. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the customer experience realm, there are lots of trends. Um, mm -hmm. And some trends maybe are okay, some are less okay, and then some are really good. Which would you say is your like number one trend that you think is here to stay at the moment? Live support. Yeah. That's it. Interesting, because I think currently people start to worry like, you know, do people want someone there now or are they just going to get everything done by robots? But would you say that, no, like having someone available live is, is the way to go? If you have a problem, like a major problem, like a fire in your house or you had an accident, you hurt yourself at home or somebody started to break in or whatever, and you call emergency services, or you call emergency services, right? You don't text them. You don't kind of live chat them. You don't message, WhatsApp them. You don't Facebook messenger them. You call somebody because the problem is important enough that you want somebody else to help you right, right there and to say, yes, we've got you. We're on our way. Now, that doesn't mean to say that's when things are emotionally uh, intense or the problem is complicated or serious or there's an emergency Yes, I think that's going to need it. Now, that's not necessarily going to be appropriate for everybody, but just to dismiss it as being not a thing just because it's too expensive, I think it's taking a very spreadsheet approach to things and just going, oh, that's an expensive line. We need to cut that. I think we need to work hard to help people help themselves as much as possible. But we also need to show up when things get serious or complicated. Well, again, coming back to the point that we keep resonating on, and I love this for us, is that remembering that you're serving the customer, what does the customer want? Like, yes, customer service is a cost center. Like it does cost. It's not it though, it's not ah. a cost center. No, 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 not at all. That's the traditional kind of view. Yes, if you look at it on a spreadsheet or a set of accounts and things, yes, it'll show up as a um, as a line, a big cost, and a quite a heavy cost because of the headcount that's required. That's true. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you have to look at it differently. It's like, yes, it's a cost, but it's also an investment. It's an investment in relationships. It's an investment in in in, in engagement. It's also an investment in data. Um, I think we've touched on so many important topics and I hope everyone's kind of taken some inspiration from this, but maybe this isn't enough for someone <laughs> to feel fully committed. I know, I know, I want them to believe, but if they don't, do you have any recommendations of where else they can go, what else they can learn from, or is there a place, is there a person, persons, uh, where, where would you recommend that people go for further learning? Oh, um, So I'll tell you one thing that I do, um, and it just kind of, because it's it becomes a, it's like an easy thing, and you'll love it. It's like an automated thing. There's a thing called uh, Google Alerts. And if you don't know it, then look it up. Just go Google Alerts, and it'll show up. And what it will, what you can do, and you should put in, you can search on, a whole set of terms and you could be customer service, customer support, customer experience, kind of whatever it might, blah, 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 all these different things. And you can set it up to send you an email with all these new search results on a daily, weekly, hourly kind of basis, whatever. I think kind of hourly is probably a bit too much. Daily is probably too much as well, but every kind of like few kind of days, let's say, and it will send you a whole bunch of stuff of links, announcements, you know postings articles all these different sort of things and i think that's probably a good way to start because you're leveraging the technology to do the work for you i always recommend to diversify the information you make available to yourself so google alerts is definitely doing that too so you're not just taking one single human's opinion although I do very much value your opinion and I've really enjoyed this conversation. So thank you ever so much for taking the time to talk to us today. For those that are listening, thank you so much. We greatly appreciate you. If you're interested in anything else that we are covering, we have multiple topics that we're going to be looking into during this CX series. So please do stay tuned and we look forward to seeing you next time.